All right, fight or flight two. Uh, if you watch the first one, it, we start talking about what happens when a guy walks by my door and my heart rate goes, damn, I forgot to turn this video camera. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> oh, geez. Stupid memory. All right. That's good. That'll lead us into our next topic on, on what happens to the memory, etc. Uh, if a guy walks by my window right now, my heart rate goes from 60 to 200. The body does a lot of physical changes really quick. And if you're not aware of this, long ago before they did these studies, before they understood this, cops were kind of... Uh, and military guys, you know, that post-traumatic stress, everybody kind of experiences that a little bit after a critical incident. Or when you see death, damage, all, all this negative stuff. So my heart rate goes at 200 beats per minute. What happens to the rest of my body? First of all, all, all non-mandatory systems shut down. Digestion. Any blood in my stomach digesting goes away. If you've ever heard the term, don't drive on a full belly, it makes you sleepy. Why does it make you sleepy? Because your blood goes to your digestive system, starts working on your digestive, it's working that system. When you lose, when you use more blood here, you lose blood here. You know, the old saying, guys think with the wrong head. When, one, when blood goes in one head, they forget to think with the other one. It's the same concept. When blood rushes to your gut, it moves from your head and it slows down your thought process. It slows down your reaction time. Driving on a full belly is not good. They tell cops, eat small meals. They don't listen. They go and they eat big meals, get 50% off or get free meals, or go to the donut shop. <laughs> Why do cops eat donuts? Look, cops got the reputation of donuts because back in the day, the only shop that was open where you could get coffee was a donut shop. They didn't have a 7-Eleven, AM, PM, QT, and all these other stores to where you get coffee. So cops ended up going to where they get coffee, which is normally donut shop, and then that's how the stereotype got around. But how does the stereotype become a stereotype? Because it's normally true. Cops do like donuts. <laughs> All right, I digress. <laughs> when blood goes here, it goes away from the head. It drains from the body. That slows your reaction time. If you're driving on a full belly, you're going to get sleepy. Your reaction time is less. You're not as alert. Your, your visual acuity isn't as accurate and you're less likely if a car or animal darts in front of you to be able to miss it. That's why you shouldn't drive on a full stomach. You shouldn't drive when you're tired. You shouldn't drive when you're drinking alcohol. It dulls the senses. Alcohol is a depressant. You may not know it, people get all active and crazy because it releases their inhibitions, but that's a different part. It still is a depressant and it depresses physical things in the body. When you go into your fight or flight, the opposite happens. You get stimulus. Okay, working in drugs, when you're working drugs for cops, stimulus makes the pupils dilate, depressants make the pupils constrict. When the heart rate goes up from a stimulant, the pupils dilate. If somebody's on speed or crank or any stimulant, they'll have dilated pupils. The pupil gets bigger. If they're on a depressant, alcohol, heroin, other depressants, the pupil constricts. Okay? If you have pinpointed eyes, usually a heroin user, they'll call them pinpoint pupils. Be very, very tiny. Why do crankers for drugs, if they're on crank or speed, they'll always wear sunglasses? Because the light hurts their eyes. Why does the light hurt their eyes? Because their pupils dilate. When your pupils dilate, it lets more light in. Well, when your heart rate goes from 60 to 200, guess what your pupils do? They shoot up. It's a stimulus. You just got an adrenaline pump. You're scared. The body goes, holy shit, fight or flight. I need to give this human the ability to fight or flight. Therefore, I'm going to shoot the heart rate up. When I shoot the heart rate up, I'm going to shoot blood to large muscle groups, legs, arms, chest, and back, so I can fight or I can run. I get all this blood dump in here. Sometimes you'll hear people get a little stiff. Man, it was like I couldn't move. It was... Your muscles tension up. When your muscles tension up, it gives you that extra strength. You get all this blood rush. Your body does this automatically. You may not know it. You may not realize it. You may have experienced it. Now I'm talking about it. You're going to like one. Wow, lights going on, ding, ding, ding. And it's like, hey, I had that. It happens. It happens without you knowing it. What other things happen? When that heart rate goes up, you get the blood rush to the big muscles. You lose blood to the digestive. And you lose it to extremities, fingertips, toes, 
toes will tingle, fingers will tingle. You'll lose the ability to control, which is why we talked about on the automatic, this is a slide stop and not a slide release. A slide stop, it stops it. When I pull this back, I push this up and it stops the slide from going forward. To release the slide, you're going to have some people teach you take your thumb and you press down on that slide stop. That is a bad habit. You shouldn't do it. I do it sometimes. Most of the times I don't. The way you release a slide is you either pull it like this or you pull it like this. But you use a large muscle group. And when you're training in guns, and I tell people, don't use minor, small motor skills. Your fine motor skills of finding this, using my thumb and putting it right there to release the slide, you can't do when your heart rate's at 200. You've lost blood to your fingertips. You don't have the ability to do this and to think and to concentrate on just pushing that little thing. But if you've practiced doing this, these are large muscle groups. I can pull this gun back. I can reload, stick a mag in and go, and I'm back in the fight. I can get back into the fight quicker by using large muscle groups. Now, I tell a lot of women to, to do this with a gun. If you hold it here and push the slide down, it helps develop muscle memory for locking your slide to the rear, or when you put a mag in, you can put a round in, or if you put a mag in and it's not back, you can let it go. I digress. We got all fight or flight there. This is a gun channel. We're talking about gun. How all this relates. So, so fight or flight, boom! Somebody walks by my window with a gun right now. My heart rate goes from 60 to 200. I lose digestive system. I lose blood from a lot of different extremities. I'm going to lose blood from brain a little bit, but the body takes care of that. When it pumps that blood in here and it makes my pupils dilate, it causes me to let more light in. So if I'm in the dark and I'm trying to pick out the threat, either the line, the bad guy, the government, if I'm trying to pick out that threat in the dark, guess what? My pupils have dilated. Now, if I'm in the light, it lets more light in. That's okay. Uh, your eyes work independently, just kind of off track. When I used to work presidential support sometime with the canine, and we would use our dogs, and we'd go from outside in the light to inside. And you see cops with a lot of sunglasses sometime. We don't want that light in there because light, if you get too much light, the body will constrict the eyes a little bit because it's too much light. Well, when you go in a dark building, you want your pupils dilated. Well, the bigger they are, the longer it takes to get little. The littler they are, the longer it takes to get bigger. So before you go in a building, if you're going to go in a search, a lot of times cops will close one eye. This eye is adjusting to the darkness, so it's actually expanding. This eye is still in the light, so it's going to be smaller. When I get inside a dark building, if I switch eyes, I can see better in this eye because I've given it a chance to expand without the light. You, if we're walking a dark theater, it, when you walk in, you can't see anything. You're like, wow, I can't see anything. It's too dark in here. Sometimes you're standing against the wall. If you close your eyes for a second or you do that one eye, you'll be able to see in the dark a little bit better, a little bit quicker. That's why I tell people about a horse on a horse shed. It takes 30 minutes for a horse's eye to adjust from night. That's why I tell people don't use flashlights around horses. You blind them. When you, bl you blind a human. You ever have somebody shine a light in your eye? They're driving down the street. They got their lights on. You're like, God, I can't see. You flash your well, that's what light does if you get too much light. Well, when you go in a fight or flight and your pupils dilate, that kind of goes away. Your, your, your sympathetic or, or, or your nervous system just takes over and says, no, we're controlling this now. You need all the light you can get. You need to be able to see things. Here's what else happens. You get what's called loss of peripheral vision or tunnel vision. You only see in front of you. That's because when you're in a threatening situation, your eyes focus and you lose vision. You will not see anything. In a, in a crisis situation, you tend to focus. That's why in most police and cop shootings, cops shoot bad guys in the hand that's holding a gun. If a, if a suspect has a gun and we get in a shooting, the odds of this guy getting shot here is pretty high. Because cops instinctively, they can't help it, we're taught to shoot center mass, large area, but when we see a threat, we see a gun, you can't help go, oh shit, that gun's going to kill me. You focus on it, you get tunnel vision, your heart rate goes to 200, and you instinctively shoot at the gun. 
bad guys get shot in the hand all the time. Now, bad guys a lot of times will stand like this, and that's why they get shot, because we're still shooting center mass. But if they have knives or anything, a lot of suspects get shot in the hand. That's because the system takes over in that life situation, and it makes you focus on the threat. The problem with that is if you don't understand it, you don't know what's going on, you lose this peripheral vision. So as a cop, when we walk up on a shooting or a guy that's in a shooting, we're always taught, if they're taught correctly, not all cops are taught it, you approach from the rear and you're ready to block the gun. If I'm standing here like this in an incident, if I'm standing like here on in an incident, and I'm in a critical incident, a cop comes behind me, I've lost my peripheral vision. When he comes up, he should have his hand right here because if he touches me instinctively, I may swing around and go, what? Until he can grab me, I go, hey, hey, I'm a friend. You should never approach a cop in a shooting and just come running up to him from his blind side. You may not realize this is blind side, but anything out here is his blind side when a cop's in a critical incident or anybody's in a shooting, your neighbor, anything. So realize that and understanding what happens when this heart rate goes up and you're in this fight or flight mode. There's a thousand things going on that if you're not aware of, it can hurt you, but if you're aware of, it can help you. So understanding that tunnel vision, that lack of peripheral vision, that, that in, in, uh, enlarging of the pupils. Okay, you'll get another thing that happens when that heart rate shoots up. It's called auditory exclusion. All cops in all shootings, they've interviewed over the years many cops that have been in many shootings, and all cops say, were the gunshots louder, were your ears ringing? No. Now, if I go out here and shoot a gun right now, my ears will ring for two days. Yeah, they're still ringing. So my ears that damn phone. It's always kind of, uh, you would think that if you shot a gun out in the open, your ears are going to ring because it's loud. When your heart rate jumps to 200, you get a thing called auditory exclusion. Your hearing shuts down and muffles. To keep you focused on the threat, doesn't want distractions, it shuts down the hearing. Well, that's a problem because when, you, when if we go back to that incident, I'm in a shooting and I've got a guy here and a guy, a cop's walking up behind me, he's yelling, hey, Rick, what you got? I'm coming up. And I don't hear him because I'm focused on the threat and I'm focused on saving my life and my heart rate's up and I'm shaking and I'm getting tremors because I just got an adrenaline pump and now I'm nervous and I may have pissed my pants because the bladder will void another, another side feature of the body trying to defend itself. You lose certain muscles and so you may either crap your pants or piss your pants. Now a lot of people think, oh man, you were scared, that's wimpy. Very common in a critical incident when you go into fight or flight that your, voider, your bladder will void. No side effect. So we've got all these things going on. You've got heart rate shooting at 200%. You've got digestive and blood rushing from other areas. You may get pale because you're losing blood flow. You're going to get very pale. Your muscles are going to get tense and rigid. You've got all this going on. Your hearing's going down. You've got auditory exclusion. You've got tunnel vision. Everything. Your mouth may get dry because digestive shuts down, so there's no reason to produce saliva. Uh, all this is happening that quick. And you're like, what the... But you know what? It's automatic. You can't control it. What you can't control is you can realize it's happening and understand that it's normal. You don't get refocused on what's happening to your body and you stay focused on your mission. Your mission is to live and survive. Fight or flight is a great, great tool to keep you alive. But understanding it and then understanding what happens after fight or flight happens. After you go through all this, what happens next? How, how do you come down from that 200 heart rate, etc.? Uh, it looks like I'm almost at about 15 minutes, so we'll make that a part three. There's the clue. Thank you. And we'll make that part three on what happens after all these things happen.